Good morning, everybody. You know, as of all my life, uh, 61 years, this time that we're living in today, this time we're living in today, this world needs Jesus. Whether it knows it or not, this world needs Jesus. And Jesus calls us to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth, to be his missionaries. What a great call we have. I want to, this morning, I want to talk about something uh, very personal. I want to tell you that I'll be leaving Holy Spirit Parish, the Newman Center, at the end of June. At the end of June, I will have been here for 13 years, eight of those as pastor. As you may know, my mother was diagnosed with lung cancer a few months ago. She's 85. She had a very successful surgery, great, uh, great medical care at UK. She had the, the upper lobe of her right lung removed. She was in the hospital for about three weeks. She was already in some cognitive decline, but sometimes what happens after surgery and anesthesia and a long hospital stay, that cognitive decline can accelerate. And that's what happened to my mom. So by the time she was discharged from the hospital, she was totally unable to take care of herself at all. So I took three weeks off and moved in with her. She has improved somewhat physically, but her cognitive decline has continued. You know, for example, I've got cameras on her, so you know that I can kind of keep an eye on her when I'm not there. I'll call her and I'll watch and she'll, she'll answer the phone by trying to use the TV channel changer or I'll even be over there and she'll try to call somebody and she'll pick up that channel changer. Right before a funeral, just a couple weeks ago, she left me a voicemail. I, I'd already told her about three or four o'clock in the day that I had a funeral that night. And so I said, Mom, I won't be over tonight. And uh, she said, well, I know you're working hard. You'll do great. Uh, I know things will go fine. Well, right before the funeral, I checked my voice messages. And my mom had left me a voicemail. And she said, Steve, why don't we just meet at that hill we normally meet at when I come to Lexington? Well, there is no hill that we meet at when she comes to Lexington. And she tells me all the time that she still goes to Kroger three or four times a week. My mom hadn't driven, of course, hadn't driven for months. My dad, he's 89. He also has dementia. I'll go over and watch a UK ball game with him, and the next day I'll say, boy, Dad, that was a great game, wasn't it? And he'll say, what game, son? My parents divorced when I was in medical school. So my parents live in two different households, and I'm the only child. I'm the only one to take care of them. I'm all they've got, all their business affairs, all their medical care, trying to take care of two different households plus my own. So when my mom lost her independence, I responded the way I've responded to just about everything in my life. I said, I'll work harder. This way of approaching things, working harder, has treated me very well in my life. By doing that, I've been able to accomplish many wonderful things this way. But brothers and sisters in Christ, this time, working harder, it just didn't work. Because no amount of working harder would allow me to be the pastor that you deserve here with all the complexities and the different facets of Holy Spirit Parish, the Newman Center, and, and to be able to take care of my parents like a good son should. My biblical analogy for this, for the last few months as I've been dealing with this, is I felt like the Israelites enslaved in Egypt and Pharaoh ordering them to make more bricks, make more bricks, make more bricks all the time taking away the straw that they needed to make those bricks. So I came to discern that the voice to just work harder, make more bricks, this time it was not the voice of God. It was the voice of Pharaoh. So after hours and hours and hours of prayer, after many, many, many sleepless nights, 
And after consulting with people who really know me and whom I think are very close to God, I discerned that the voice of God at this time in my life was telling me that I needed to better honor that fourth commandment, to honor my father and my mother. It is a commandment. It's a big one, and I take it seriously. After the first three of those Ten Commandments that tell us how we stand before God, uh, uh, four through, through ten tell us how we interact and how we get along with others. And the very first one, the very first one on the human side of that is honor your father and mother. One night I suddenly woke up and I sat straight up in bed. I looked at the clock and it was 1.30 in the morning and I realized that one of the very last things that Jesus did right before he took his last breath, even in the midst of that excruciating suffering on the cross, Jesus made sure that his mother was taken care of. It's in John's gospel. Our Lord is hanging from the cross, barely hanging on. And he sees his mother and he sees John the Beloved. And he tells John the Beloved to take care of his mother. Then just a few seconds later, Jesus died. He breathed his last. So I know that this is what God is calling me to do now, to take better care of my mom and dad. And I can tell you that after this discernment, after this decision, I don't wake up in the middle of the night anymore. So I had a meeting with Bishop John to tell him where I was with things. And I can say that he was so understanding so pastoral. I'll never be able to thank him enough for the kindness he's shown me at this very difficult time in my life. So we agreed that I would leave here at the end of June. Then he's going to give me a six-month sabbatical so I can take care of my parents and get things more organized for them and to spend some quality time with them while they're still here. One day I rushed over to my dad's house and left him some Cane's chicken. He loves Cain's chicken. I said, Dad, I've got to go back to work. He said, Son, do you have to leave? Can you just sit and talk for a few minutes? You know, my mom and dad have been so good to me. When I was a little boy, they told me, Steve, whatever you want to be, we'll support you. We'll make it work. I said, well, I want to be a doctor. It's the only thing I've ever wanted to be. They said, well, we'll make it work. And they worked all their lives. My parents are teachers, were teachers, and they worked their whole lives just to send me through medical school. So when this Catholic thing came up, and then the priesthood, <laughs> you can imagine how scared I was to bring it up. But I can remember exactly what my dad said. He said, son, we'll support you in this too. And if it's for God, I consider it a promotion. They've done so much for me. So I look so forward to being able to better give them what they deserve and what God is asking me to do for them. So the bishop said that after this six month sabbatical, we'll reevaluate where I am with my parents and we'll look at possibly a new assignment for me in a much smaller place. The good news is, is that the bishop made it clear that he is 100%, 100% behind this place, 100% behind our building campaign and seeing it through to completion, as will I, and that he supports our vision and our mission as a parish and in our campus ministry program. I am so confident that my replacement will be just the right person for you in this wonderful, wonderful place. God is good, and I trust in God's providence. I've already started praying for your new pastor. I think you should do the same, both as individuals and as a community. I've been meeting with uh, Tim Wills, the president of our parish pastoral council, and we're getting started on the Dawson process of what happens when a pastor leaves a parish 
and bringing someone else in. And please, please keep me and especially my mom and my dad in your prayers. Now, this isn't a goodbye, not yet. I'm really looking forward to spending the next five months with you, with everybody. This assignment has been such an incredible one for me. I've grown in so many ways. This is a very special place, and you are a very special people. On May 20th, I will have been a priest for 17 years, and 13 of those have been with you. I'm very excited for you. God has wonderful plans for this place. I think it will be very healthy to have a fresh set of eyes, look at things, someone with a new and wonderful ideas. And in God's providence, you'll get someone who will help take you to great, great places. In the meantime, let's pray for each other and let's really enjoy what I plan to do is really enjoy the next five months we all have together.